Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of a 2015 horror comedy, a movie I was actually, eh, I thought it looked like it might be a fun flick, I like the trailer, and that movie is Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Now this is a movie that, well, a lot of people didn't really care for, and I guess I can kind of understand why, but the one thing I don't get is the cries of it being cliched, and that's why it's bad. It's a zombie movie. It's a zombie comedy. It's a zombie film. I mean, if you are at all familiar with the horror genre and how many fucking zombie movies have been made, I think it being cliched and is not being 100% original is, I don't know, that's that's the, that's the one of the least, this least of my worries, so to speak. I, I mean, that's just me personally. If it bothers you, cool, but... I don't get it. I don't get why that's such a big deal. Why, oh, it's cliche. That's why it sucks. I'm sorry. There's no such thing as a 100% original zombie movie. And this movie actually had some stuff that was actually somewhat unique. Since when have you seen a film where scouts, boy scouts, fight zombies? I've seen a movie where boy scouts were zombies in Cemetery Man. But I've never seen a movie where boy scouts fought zombies. Have you... I mean, really, so there's something different just right there. There's a unique uh, take on it just there. There's, there. I thought there was actually some actually kind of unique things about this movie. I think they're kind of overlooked. Um, but that's just me personally. I enjoyed the film. I had fun with it. I thought it was an entertaining movie. Did it have problems with it? Yes. At best, I would say it's an above average movie. It's not great. It's not a classic. I, I mean, I didn't like it as much as Cooties or Deathgasm, but I did enjoy the movie. I, I thought I thought it was an enjoyable film. It had some nice bits of gore, which was practical. Majority of the gore and blood in this movie was practical. It was practical uh, gore effects, which actually looked really good. The zombie makeup was practical. Um, there's very little CGI. There's a little bit of CGI fire in one instance, but there's actually a real scene where somebody actually gets lit on fire. And in today's day and age, that was really surprising. And that really went a long way for me, considering that a lot of films nowadays don't really want to have real fire. They don't want to deal with the danger of that, so they don't want to have professional stuntmen light themselves on fire anymore. They're, they'd rather have it be CGI. And CGI fire looks fake, and it doesn't really w look right. It, doesn't look, it, it takes you out of the film. This movie tried to have as much practical special effects as it could for a $15 million budget, and for the most part it works. They even blew up a real side of a building near the end of the climax, and that's the kind of stuff that went that went a long way for me, um, effects-wise anyway. Um, yeah, there was a little bit of CGI, but it was for a reason, for a scene that they couldn't really shoot practically. Uh, it was a sequence in the, in the rave dance party at the end near the end of the climax and one of the zombies gets his head uh knocked off in slow-mo um and that that the zombie was actually played by a dj who actually worked on the music for the film uh so which is kind of interesting um but uh that's the only little bit of cgi i remember i mean even the zombie tits there were zombie tits in the movie they were practical uh there was a zombie dick that an old zombie old man dick that i really didn't need to see that stretched out like stretch armstrong but it was practical so you know it's one of those things that okay you know I'm glad it was practical but i still didn't need to see the zombie dick but you know uh yeah the film is definitely a horror comedy, and it's definitely a movie that is a throwback to the 80s. And that's a thing that I also really liked about it. I'm a big fan of 80s horror, like films like Night of the Creeps and Fright Night and, and so on, and The Monster Squad. And this movie had that same sort of vibe to it, and, and I really liked it for the most part. At least I liked its vibe and I liked its tone. It's directed by Christopher B. Landon, and it's based on a screenplay by Carrie Evans, Christopher B. Landon, and Emmy Mo Mochizuki. And um, for the most part, I thought the writing was, it was there. Um, 
there's not much in terms of character development, but that's okay. Because it's more, it's trying to be more of a fast-paced movie, especially at least at the for the last hour. I mean, the first half of the film is kind of a kind of hard, kind of slow. I mean, it opens pretty poorly, which I'll talk about soon. But it doesn't. It once it gets going, though, it doesn't stop. So you know, I think there's enough character development, but that's not the type of movie it's trying to be. I think the main problem I have with the script is that its sense of humor is inconsistent. So there are times where it's pretty funny, like all the Dolly Parton references and stuff I thought was pretty clever. And once in a while there'll be a good one-liner and some good uh, bits of banter between, you know, the characters. But there are other times where the jokes would just fall flat and they just didn't work. I mean, cocktail waitress? Like... That's just lame. So there was a lot of instances like that with a sense of humor where he just, this is just lame. Some of the characters were just, I didn't really care for, especially one of the, uh, the character Carter, uh, Carter Grant played by Logan Miller, such an annoying character. He was an annoying little twat. I guess that's the point. He's supposed to be an annoying little twat, but with a heart of gold and you're supposed to like him. But I'm like, there's such a thing as an annoying little twat that is likable. Because if you're an annoying little twat, you're not likable. And that's really what Carter was. There was a few instances where he had some one-liners I chuckled at. And a nice little bit of back and forth in a scene with him and Denise. Where he's talking with Denise. And he's upset because she's like getting kind of angry at him. He's like, God, you don't, want, you don't have to be so hostile. Why do you have to be so hostile? He's like, hostile? And I, I like Denise's reaction. Hostile? Hostiles three seconds from now when I shove my foot up your ass. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you know, well, good luck. Oh, why is that? Because I got a very tight asshole. Oh, yeah? Well, let me spread it out for you. <laughs> let, let me loosen it up for you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, okay, all right. Okay, ba baby. I'll bring the lube. You know, I got the lube, baby. You know, you know, you know. Give me your best shot. It was that kind of stuff. That okay, all right. But he's better when there's somebody to go off with him. When there's a du there's double the antagonism. But when it's just him, he just comes across as a whiny asshole. It's a whiny douchebag. He's annoying. He's an ass. So they didn't really care for that character. Um, but I didn't mind the lead. I like Ty Sheridan as Ben. Uh, Logan uh, Miller, yeah, uh, you know, Joey Morgan, I didn't mind as Augie. Uh, David Kirkner is in it, but he doesn't really have much to do. A scout leader, Rogers. Uh, Sarah Dumont, I really liked. She's not the greatest actress in the world, but she's she's competent enough. I liked her character because she was a supporting female character that was a badass. And she kicked ass and took names, and uh, I liked that. And she's hot. She's got legs for days. I mean, damn. I mean, she really is. I mean, if you've seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think I got a new girl. I think I got. I think I got a new crush. Uh, she's hot. Uh, um, but anyway, um, and she wasn't really the love interest, which is nice too. It was a nice little change of pace. Um, if it was so cliche, she would have just fallen in love with the lead, but that's not really what happens. So the film isn't nearly as cliche as some of the critics make it out to be. The more I think about it, it really isn't. Um, so there's a few few cliches, but I don't care. I don't, I'm not looking for, I'm not looking at a zombie film, and if it's not cliche, if it's cliched, boo, hiss, thumbs down. I don't care if it's cliched or not. You know, because there's been what thousands of zombie movies made. I what I'm looking at is is it entertaining? Does it have good bits of gore? Is it fun to watch? And for the most part, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse is. Um, Cloris Leachman is also in it in a little brief role. Uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger, Arnold Son, you know Patrick Schwarzenegger. Uh, he play, he's uh, in it as Jeff, but it's a very little role. There's really not much to it. And uh, that, that's pretty much it for the cast. Uh, the film features music by um, Matthew Margeson, Mar Margeson. And I like the score for the most part. It wasn't super memorable, but I liked how it, it had it kind of felt like a throwback. It actually was a score that sounded like 
it was using strings and it was an instrumental piece. It was a little bit of an orchestra that was used instead of just nothing but synth synthesizers and, um, and just heavy percussion. So it was actually refreshing to hear a score like this in a horror comedy or just a horror film because you really don't hear that type of score very often in a movie like this anymore. And it was nice to hear. And speaking of music, there's one scene in this film that I just swear, I swear to God, I thought it was made especially for me and people like me. And that was a scene in the climax when the Boy Scouts, they all get ready, gear up to fight the zombies and go crash the senior party that they were they were they thought they were invited to but really they were invited to a sewage plant because the guy you know the, the popular guy is an asshole so they find the hidden party and they show up just in time to kick some ass and and start kicking some zombie ass and save some of the teenagers you know from becoming zombie food and this is what happens like they've as soon as they walk in, you hear I got it, I got it wrong. Fuck, I can't believe I got that fucking song wrong. Anyway, what you hear is Scorpion's Rocky Like a Hurricane. Which went a very, that was fucking awesome. I mean, seriously. Like, my face went from, oh, cool, alright, to <laughs> Holy shit! Yes, I'm like air guitar in in my room and just rock it out. Because Scorpions Rocky Like a Hurricane is my favorite song of all time. It's also Scorpions are also one of my favorite bands. It probably is my favorite band. So to hear my favorite song of all time in an action sequence is actually pretty badass. And it's short, but it's very sweet. And it's just. It was awesome. It was like a dream come true. It was, it was like, like I said, the filmmakers were making this sequence specifically for me and people like me who love Scorpions, Rocky, like a hurricane. It was just, it was badass. It was awesome. It was one of my favorite things I've seen from last year was just, was uh, Rocky, like a hurricane in this sequence. Um, I mean, I watched the film in 2016, but if we're talking about movies from 2015, some of my favorite stuff from movies from 2015 is this this particular sequence. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It was awesome. Uh, so, yeah. But part of it is probably because I love the song so much. Here I am. Da -da, da -da, da -da -da. Rock you like a hurricane. Yeah, it was awesome. I love that song. Um, that's probably the best part of the movie was probably that there, there was some other stuff that I, I did like, like a little bit of, I liked scenes with Denise. She shows up with a shotgun and just starts blowing zombies heads off right and left. That was pretty awesome. Um, there was, uh, the whole rave sequence, the whole party sequence at the end. That was cool. I liked the, the weapons that the, the scouts created for themselves. Um, the dolly part, the scene where Augie is fighting with his scout troop leader, who's a zombie, and and uh, his scout troop leader, Dave, Dave Cochner's character, Cochner's character, <laughs> he's a huge Dolly Parton fan, and to the point he's just obsessed. And th there's this fight going on, and they turn on a, a, a record player or something, and it starts playing 9 to 5. <laughs> and I just, I just thought that was hilarious. Because, you know, just hearing, you know, 9 to 5, you know, that song by Dolly Parton from the movie 9 to 5, while there's a, it's a, in a little bit of a chase scene, was actually pretty funny and pretty clever. They used Dolly Parton, a Dolly Parton standee for a jump scare. <laughs> Had to really hilarious effect. Um, yeah, I like scenes with the Dolly Parton stuff. So that was pretty funny. Um, and uh, just... I, I like the climax. I like. The, I thought it was a pretty cool climax. I, they fight the zombies in in the party, and then they even end up blowing up half the side of the building. They slide down a slide to to get out of the out of the uh, building before it blows up, which reminded me of like the Goonies or you know that scene in the first Power where uh, uh, LDP and uh, 
Tracy Griffith go down the water, you know, go down the water chute uh, before they face off with Channing. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, it was, it was fun to see that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, this is a film I really don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I like some of the performances by the cast. It was nice to see a horror film with a male lead, but it also had a female lead supporting character who was strong and kicked ass and she was nice to look at too i mean that was refreshing i would like to see more horror films like this um with male leads but also has females in the mix and they kick ass and they have their own character and, and stuff like that i like that denise's character was more had more of a hard edge and she was you know she was a stripper but you know you gotta make a living, and uh, I, I liked her character. It was nice to see an older female character with a teenage guy, basically, and she becomes a mentor to him. That doesn't happen very often in film, in, in many, very many films, let alone in a movie like this, and in, in, in a horror comedy. Uh, and yeah, the only aspect of the, the aspects of the film that where the film suffers is a little bit of the comedy. It's inconsistent. Too much gross-out stuff. I mean, the zombie tits. I mean, Carter has to cop a feel of zombie tits for some reason. Uh, there's a scene where Augie's just taking a shit. I don't really need to see that. I, I, I mean, we don't actually see him take the shit, but he's in the pro. You see him sitting on the toilet and you hear fart noises. It was just unnecessary. I know there's a zombie that's trying to grab him, but it's just... It's not necessary. Carter getting bit in the ass by a zombie chloric leechman doesn't really don't care i mean it's not necessary old man dick you know old old zombies dick you know stretching out like it's fucking silly putty not necessary and gross um there's the scene in the beginning of the film which is just the film opens up like a train wreck i was really worried about it when you when the beginning where you have this obnoxious fucking character who I swear to God is looks like that guy from Workaholics, which is a show I don't care for. With his long frizzy hair. So this guy's going around. He's a janitor, and he's listening to this annoying fucking hip hop music. And I guess he fucks up somehow. Sees that there's this this guy that is in this facility somewhere, and he sees that this guy is all fucked up looking, and he bumbles around and fumbles around and fucks up his life support. And then all the all while this is going on, it keeps cutting to this guy who works at the facility, who all oh, his fucking favorite snack food is stuck in the vending machine. And I'm like, this is just bad. And then it ends predictably. The fucking dumbass guy, whatever, ends up bringing a zombie to life or something. It kills his ass. And then the zombie, and then the guy, the, the dumbass janitor gets zombified and then goes after the guy who just wanted his snack food. He wanted his Funyuns or some shit. And he gets eaten. And then, of course, something, his body smacks the vending machine and his favorite snack food falls down. I'm like, really? Great. That was really a bad opening. It was a really bad way to start the film. And then... The film does take a while to get going, so I can see why some people kind of thought it was boring. But trust me, once you get past the 30-minute mark, it picks up and it does not stop. And that's a big reason why I, I enjoyed the film. I found it to be entertaining for the most part. is because after that 30-minute mark where they're trying to build up some characters, but not much happens. There's a little bit of gore. Uh, like the characters hit a deer, and then, you know, Dave Cogner gets infected, and after he tries to, after he goes after a zombie deer, and it's all practical, which is nice to see, the zombie deer, um, but then there's really not much that happens, you get introduced to the characters, to Denise, and, and to Ben, and to Carter, and to Augie, and, um, yeah, the, the, just everything starts to escalate, because Augie is, he's, he's, he's into the Boy Scouts, and he's this overweight kid, and his friends have basically joined Boy Scouts as a favor to him, and they don't want to, they thought they were invited to this big party, and so they're going to sneak out while Augie's asleep, and there, this is, this is, there's like one line of dialogue, this is like one of the few lines of dialogue by Carter that I didn't mind, where he's talking about, you know, 
Well, what about Augie? We'll wake him up. Oh, don't worry about it. I mean, Chewbacca could be fucking Bigfoot, and and, and Augie wouldn't wake up. <laughs> I mean, just that image is fucked. Is is really really crazy. But I, I thought it was kind of funny. Chewbacca could be fucking Bigfoot in the ass, <laughs> and then Augie wouldn't wake up. Of course, Augie finds out what's happening, and then. They end up pretty much meeting up. They end up sneaking out. And uh, Augie finds out later because they sneak out. And they stop at the strip couple on the way. Because they find out the bodyguard's not there. And so they go in and they get a lap dance. And the, and the stripper turns out to be infected. And then that's when you have the, the, the other stripper character played by Denise. Denise's character, who's played by Sarah Dumont. Who comes in and saves them, and then says that terrible line with the sh and she cocks a shotgun and goes, "Is like oh, you're a stripper, no cocktail waitress." It's, it was just, that was just bad. Uh, but anyway, that's what I'm talking about. It's inconsistently funny. And so then she goes in and teams up with them and blows blows some zombies' heads off, and you know there there's some fun to be had. There there's I had I got a good chuckle out of this one zombie who's like a big fan of Britney Spears, and Augie gets him to sing "Hit Me Baby" one more time, and I like the fact that the script showed the military show up, but it didn't end predictably, like where they get taken by the military and the whole, the whole town gets put under quarantine or some, you know, like the Blob remake, you know. I was like, oh, okay, we really need to do this again. That's not what happens, because. The, the soldier guy gets infected, tries to attack them, they kill him. And I like the line of dialogue that Denise has. She crushes the soldier zombie's head with the, with the door of the car, the, the Humvee. And she's all like, I'm so fucking sick and tired of zombies. <laughs> Which is kind of how I feel about zombie movies. But I, I like this one because it was at least a zombie comedy. Uh, at least it was a horror comedy. It reminded me a lot of Return of the Living Dead or Return of the Living Dead Part 2, that kind of vibe to it. If you like those movies, I definitely would recommend you give this a look sometime. But anyway, of course, they they team up uh, because uh, the girl goes off on her own or it looks like she might be a goner or something. I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. But they team up and they end up... Uh, deciding that they're going to save the world and they gear up and create their own weapons and go to the find the secret party and kick some zombie ass and then they blow up the zombies and well that's the end of the movie and ben gets the girl that he's had a crush on all his life and there you go it, it actually has a happy ending what it was a stupid twist at the end where dave kochner's head shows up and like ah, blah, blah, or says some stupid shit it's forgettable and it says the end it's just dumb but uh you know other than that i mean i liked the movie i liked it i thought it was an uh, entertaining movie it wasn't great like i said it's above average film because of the some of the the problems that i mentioned uh annoying character in carter who i cannot really stand i want to punch him in the face i i, I wish i wish the zombies would have eaten his brains um the slow beginning, the slow first uh, 30 minutes or so, which is definitely really slow pace, and the opening sucked. Um, some of the choices of music were awesome, like Rocky Like a Hurricane. Other choices weren't so much, like Soldier Boy. What the hell? Soldier Boy? Why? Why Soldier Boy? Um, but, you know, I, I like the score. I think the direction is all right. The editing is pretty good. It's a fast-paced movie for the most part once you get past the slow beginning. And, uh, it, you know, it was fun. It was entertaining. I liked it because it had a good sense of fun about it. It didn't take itself too seriously. And there was a good bit of creativity there, too. I mean, the zombie cat scene, it's very short, but I, I liked it. There was actually a practical zombie cat. There's a lot of practical gore in this, which is definitely... I definitely did like seeing. Uh, there was um, some fun shotgun fun with the zombies getting their heads blown off. There was a fun climax at the party with zombies getting their faces chopped off and all kinds of fun stuff. And when there was CGI, the filmmakers actually did a great had a great idea where they had the whole sequence in sort of a rave like 
uh, environment. So you had all these flashing lights and stuff, which really helped cover up the CGI, what little of it that was used. Usually the problem with CGI is that they never get the lighting right. Here you can cover up the lighting or the lack of lighting or the lighting that doesn't really fit with the scene because you have all the strobe lights and all this stuff going on. So I definitely did like that. Um, but yeah, I I don't think this is as bad as people make it out to be. I really don't. It's definitely a film if I saw it for cheap. I pick it up sometime. I enjoyed it. I, w I would say Cooties is a lot better. I would say that's a much better film. It was funnier. It was, it was, uh, it had some of the same sort of, you know, uh, gore set pieces, some of the same sort of gags, but, um, I don't know. Cooties is just something about, it. I like the plot was, it took the zombie stuff, but it was, it felt like a little bit more fresh than scouts versus zombies did. Um, and that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy scouts versus zombies. It's just, you know that that film felt even more fresh with the idea of the the kids being infected, um, and Deathgasm I definitely like more too. Um, awesome heavy metal soundtrack, uh, even more gore. But like Deathgasm, one well, of the problems I had with Deathgasm is too much dick, and here there's, there's a little bit of that. But um, I'd probably say I like the characters for the most part more in Deathgasm though than I did in this. I mean I liked. Ben, and I liked Augie, but I couldn't stand Carter. But I, and I also really liked Denise. I mean, I, fuck. I mean, she's got, she's got legs, knows how to use her. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, I don't know what else to say about Scouts uh, versus Zombies, or which is the original title for the movie, A Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Except it was a rate out of five stars, three and a half out of five. Above average, entertaining, fun, uh, zombie horror comedy. Um, I'd recommend it if you like that kind of stuff. If you don't, probably won't be your cup of tea. But if you like a good old-fashioned throwback uh, 80s style horror comedy, I'd actually recommend this. I think you might uh, have a good time. Anyway, thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys later. See ya.